and welcome to another video about our resume series on this video we're going to talk about how to format your cv or resume if you are a fresh graduate somebody with a different job background or if you have a flight attendant experience before so listen up and learn and let's get right into the video What to do if you don't have any flight attendant experience or if you don't have any experience at all you're a fresh graduate yo fresh from the barn so what you will do is um, highlight your other skills for example if in school you learn how to do the sign language you could put it there sign other skills sign language English skills, communication skills. If you know other languages as well, for example, you know Nipongo or you know Chinese, say Chinese speaker or Japanese speaker, that will be the best way to represent you aside from putting in your educational attainment. And now my tip for you, you have a previous job experience but it's not a flight attendant experience, then you highlight your skills you should use a format called a combination format so you put your name on top and then you put in the skills and qualifications uh, after that and then your work experience okay so what this does is it highlights the transferable skills that you have like when I talked about earlier about being a call center agent the communication skills and the customer service skills put that first on top okay and then that way they can easily imagine you as a flight attendant. Now, if you are a previous flight attendant, you should put your flight attendant experience on top, okay? So after your name and your contact details and your personal info, put in your work experience. The years that you have worked on the flight attendant field, also the different duties that you have done for the company, like for example, greeting passengers, <laughs> assisting passengers, and instructing them on safety. Uh, again, use the action words that I've said earlier on our previous tip. So, put down the different duties that you have performed for your current company or for your previous company. And then, that way, it is so much easier for the hiring manager to see you working for them. If you'd like to have more tips about your interview, check out my book and my online courses. I will link them down below. So that's all my tip for you guys for your resume. If you are applying for the job as a flight attendant, make sure that you like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet been subscribed already. And I will see you guys on the next video. Fly with you soon! Bye! like to have more tips about your interview check out my book and my online courses i will link them down below hello and welcome to our third module this week and the first lesson that we're going to talk about is the anatomy of the resume anatomy of the resume so this is your resume or cv this is what you will give the recruiters that includes your pictures and information about you so let's talk about that so, for example, a hiring manager will look at your resume. Let's see, the study shows that it only takes six seconds for a hiring manager to look over your whole resume and decide if they really want to further investigate or if they have a bad impression about it. So that's how this average time that they would assess how you would present yourself in paper. So now we're talking about the resume hacks that you could do to make sure that your resume stands out among the others who are applying, especially if you're applying for the flight attendant position. There are so many people who is applying for the job than a regular, you know, a, another regular job. It's so much more than, for example, a call center applicant. So like it. It's like hundreds to thousands of applicants. So imagine the hiring manager looking over those different um, applications and all the more that you need to stand out. So resume hacks. 
the first thing is you make sure that the most important details about you stands out. So that is your name, your contact number, and email address. Put it all on the top of your resume. Sometimes it also includes your weight and height. So it depends on you. So here you can see that my name is on top, my picture is also on top, and personal details go right under it. Resume hacks. Make sure that your resume is as brief and complete as possible. Avoid five-page resumes. Stick to one cover letter and one-page resume. If you can't, you can do two or three. It's like really stretching it. But if you can really make it into just one page, that will be awesome. So the cover letter and your resume. Match your job description with your skill set. This next hack is very important. It's the core, uh, this like the secret sauce that you need to have on your resume to be able to really stand out. So if you can't do anything else on the resume, if you do this right, you're good to go. So for example, this is a description of a flight attendant, you know, flight attendant hiring uh, or classified ad. So they will describe their ideal candidates and the responsibilities that they want their flight attendants to um, to have or to, per to perform. So the first thing is you identify the skills needed in the job. Like for example here, skills are words like service oriented, help others, passion for service, personalized customer service, solving problems so these are the things that they are looking for so you make sure that all of these things that they are looking for it's all in your resume so you are following their lead so this is what they are leading so prioritize the skills according to the importance so you see i put here number one for service see this is the most important thing number two um safety or in-flight responsibilities like these things prepare yourself beverages answer as and answer passenger questions avoid and provide assistance so that's number two and you can see here number three i talked about the safety and comfort emergency care so uh now you know what they are looking for now let's make sure that all of this is written down in our resume so that when the hiring manager looks at our resume they know that they found what they're looking for because we put it there you know we follow their own words you know they use their own words and put it on our resume all right so other tips when you're putting uh, putting together a resume is uh, here let's break it down so much more so the things that they're looking for in the job description is all about aircraft operations, safety announcement, intercom operations, procedure, uh, emergency procedures, people skills, time management, communication skills, safety, and consciousness. So all of these are the things that we have highlighted on the previous slide. And we wrote it down here so that we will have a much, you know, organized, view of what they are really looking for and all you have to do is you match it match it with your relevant skills examples that you have uh, that you have those skills or achievements that shows that you have those skills and previous experiences that help you gain those skills so that's all that you really need to do to make sure that your resume is standing out among the others so how do you do that um, you just don't copy and paste those skills that you have found in the classified ads you have to use action words and adjectives adjectives and action words to describe the exact same skills so this is a good example of how you would write down the same words because you see it's like you're putting another effort on top of you know finding out what skills that they're looking for and then making it look good on paper it's very pleasing to the eyes of the hiring manager 
you see it like you put some effort in your resume in that way and also for example if you opt to do a very extensive resume format wherein you write in your previous experience and then you write in the previous responsibilities that you did uh, for the previous company this is the wrong way of doing it and this is the right way see how it is very professional you use words that are very professional this is the ones looking using words that are very casual and it's like you're just talking to a friend you didn't really put any thought of it on it and then you didn't really put any effort but here you are actually using adjectives and action words you know to the responsibilities that you perform that way it's so much clearer what kind of uh, candidate they have because of your use of this um, words like relayed communication to passengers and cabin crew for, from the flight deck in a professional and personal man manner so relayed communication it's an action word view from the flight deck in a professional and personal manner that's an adjective so if you can see the wrong example is delivered messages between pilots and cabin crew it's like you did use an action word but you can make it sound more professional and better by using these words all right so also when you're doing this be careful that you do not overdo it just the right amount so that it won't be difficult to read you know overdoing it is using words with the same meaning yeah making it very redundant but if you do it this way very straight to the point but you still have put some effort okay then you are on the right track another hack that we need to do is relevance so whenever you're trying to put things on your resume you don't just put things to make sure that you put a lot of things on it make sure that every single thing is relevant to the job of a flight attendant like for example here she's writing about her past experience as a flight attendant but she also put out these things ticketing duties that she has done on the previous um, company so it's kind of like you're trying to impress but it's gonna do the opposite because ticketing duties is not a concern of a cabin crew of a flight attendant so just focus on everything about the flight attendant like your passenger satisfaction rating um, and your goal to advance your career and then you use specific you drop their name specific airline company that you're applying for and that's so much better than trying to say things that is not related to the job so that's why this is wrong so just stay focused on the cabin crew position or the flight attendant position and don't put anything that is not relevant there because it will just be like garbage on your resume it will be just like trash that nobody wants to look at nobody wants to hear about it's not related you're just wasting my time so like i said um the average time that a hiring manager will look into your resume is six seconds so make sure that everything that they see there is not trash okay it's all on point and it's all relevant okay so what if you have an experience that is not a flight attendant so you have to use transferable skills so this is how you do it for example you are a previous hotel supervisor so the right way of saying it is you focus on your skills friendly and responsible guest relations supervisor for a large hotel chain obtained highest regional fine satisfactor satisfaction scores and seeking to enliven in my passion for travel and growing with the team at American Airlines as you can see again it is personalized they drop names so she used the company that she's applying for 
and then she focused on the skills and then she focused on facts facts like scores satisfaction rating uh, and things like that maybe employee of the month will also do so this is a really good way of positioning yourself as a candidate if you are not a previous flight attendant because this way you can see the different skills that is applicable to being a flight attendant so the wrong way of saying it is i'm a hotel supervisor without experience in the aviation industry but many people say that i'm a fast learner i have a highly I have highly motivated love to fly and turbulence doesn't bother me that much so this is not really factual you're saying things that people say so this like hearsay you don't have any proof of that unless they come with you on the application <laughs> and tell you that yeah she's really a fast learner so and then there is nothing here that I can use to match you to the flight attendant position that I am looking for you know you didn't show any skills you didn't say any skills you didn't say any any you know any satisfaction scores or awards that you have received that is related to the flight attendant job so there is nothing here and also you are starting on a negative note without experience you never say that i don't have experience i have no experience you don't say anything negative about yourself especially on paper and in person, verbally, you never do that because you want to make sure that you come up as a positive person. So another way of saying this is seeking to enliven in my passion for travel and growing with the team. So this way, you also convey that you don't have a experience, but then you are actively seeking uh, for a passion, you know, that is related to a flight attendant so much better than saying that, I don't have experience so you have admitted that you don't have experience in the aviation industry so this is really bad way of positioning yourself so yes this is how you do it uh, again you have to personalize it use drop their names you know and you have to put facts and you have to put skills that they can use something that the hiring manager can use for you Okay, now let's talk about the cover letter. So these are the tips for writing your cover letter. You drop names, you use the CEO name, the company name, the hiring manager's name. This way you show them that you really research about the company. Explain why the FA duties excites you. So the tone of your letter should be something that you are really excited for, you are interested, and inform them why you need why they need you for this job. So this is where you put in your skills, your, your relevant uh, experiences and awards, achievements, and possibly grab their attention by mentioning something about the airline that you can relate with. For example, you're applying for AirAsia. Uh, tell them that I really love how AirAsia is focused on providing great service in a fun and friendly attitude because i think my 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 personality is also very fun loving and friendly and i think i'm a good fit for your company something like that so that way you really show them that you have researched their company and then you are what they need for this job because you are a good fit to it by you telling them why you're a good fit for them okay so that's how you could impress with your cover letter what kind of formats should I use or so different types of flight attendant um, candidates and different formats will work for them. For example, you, are ha you have a flight attendant experience, you use the reverse chronological experience format wherein you list your most relevant work first. No flight attendant experience but with other experience, um, use a combination format wherein you highlight relevant skills and achievements from the past jobs in bullet point. If you're a fresh graduate with no experience, use the educational format wherein you focus your education and your other skills related to the job. So it doesn't mean that you don't have any job experience, you don't have any skills at all, right? Because in school, that's what we learn to do. We learn different skills in school, like for example, language, we learn swimming, we learn team building, we learn leadership, we learn so many things. 
So this is your chance to put those learnings in paper so that you would look good in paper <laughs> and during your interview. For example, for a fresh graduate like here, uh, if I will do this format, I would focus on my skills, my other um, other skills that I have learned, first aid, uh, working with a team, English written and verbal skills, and different languages that I know, my personality, and then what I will write here instead of work experience is my educational experience, the university, the high school, the primary school, things like that. And then, um, for example, I am somebody with working experience with other company. I will make sure that I highlight the other skills that I learned from them and some facts about my previous job, first aid, proven ability, team player, and then here I will write my work experience. But I will focus more on the skills, transferable skills. We have talked about earlier what if I'm a previous flight attendant so I will make sure that I write that down first my flight attendant experience prior to other work experience that I may have then write down the skills and then all the things that would help me you know like personal qualities qualifications and skills you know like protocols of flight emergency because I already know that being a flight attendant, so I have to list them down to make sure that um, the hiring manager can easily match me to the company. So that's the end of the lesson for this uh, anatomy of a resume. Next, we're going to talk about the flight attendant pictures. So just click on the next button and uh, let's go about and some pointers on how to take your pictures for the flight attendant um, job application. Thank you and see you on the next one. Hello and welcome to lesson 2 where we will talk about your pictures that you're going to use when you are applying for the flight attendant position. So the pictures are very important. They show a full body uh, representation of you also a headshot so this is usually required by different airlines so how do you pose for the picture what is the pointers or some tips that we need to follow to be able to stand out among the others and have our application thoroughly considered so for the photograph you need to have a headshot and a full leg photo the size will be either 2x2 two two or passport size and for the full length usually 4 are size photograph. For the background, make sure you use a plain solid color like a light blue or white background. Please avoid using backgrounds like this one, the X with the clouds, gradient light because these are really not necessary and some companies will ask you to repeat them if it's not plain background color so how to pose you need to smile authentically your smile could either be closed or open mouth depending on the company for Qatar Airways they prefer open mouths do not raise your eyebrows make sure your face and your sight are camera oriented make sure your hands or legs fit the picture and do not cross your legs do not wear glasses or colored contact lenses and take note the background should be one color, I already said that. Um, sufficiently illuminated pictures are preferred. So you can achieve this if you go to a studio where they use professional lights to help you with your photograph. Uh, the pictures must be taken at your height level. It shouldn't be like looking up or looking down. It has to be height level. The picture must be clear and at a high resolution. So no problem if you are going to a studio, definitely they will give you a high resolution photograph. Both photographs should be taken at the same time so as not to be upsettingly different. So the headshot and the full length, take it at the same time. Don't take the headshot today and then take the full length next month because you're still trying to lose the weight or something like that. It has to be the same so that you'll have the same 
um, you know, makeup, same clothes, same facial features, and all that. Full length photo must show your full body, including the shoes. And here I just want to show you the Qatar Airways photograph specification for male and female candidates. So this is exactly how they want their candidates to have their photos. This is a good baseline uh, reference if you're applying for other airlines, you know, because uh, you don't really have to follow it, but it's a good guideline, right? So for Qatar Airways, a female, um, they want the hair bond, uh, wearing the inner shirt, knee-length skirt, feet together, and with this allowance of spaces all over right so you can only wear a watch a small earring do not hide the ears open smile um do not uh wear colored lenses okay and also if you are wearing glasses they want you to wear glasses but also make your eyes visible photographs must be taken at least six months from the time of application so and identical so for the male, they want the feet apart, a full coat for the male with a tie, as you can see, short hair, trim sideburns, show the ears, and open, open palms, also for the female, open the palms, and make sure that it's relaxed, and yeah, that's it. So behind the photograph, you have to write the date, month, and year format using a non-smudging pen. Please write in block capital letters. So yeah, this is for the passing uh, for the candidates who have passed the interview. They will ask for the photographs. It really has to be plain, like blue color for them. Uh, okay, so that's all of it. Okay, I guess we have gone through everything. Okay, also for the headshot, this is their guideline for the headshot. It's like a photograph for a visa application, 35mm by 45mm. Okay, so follows the same rules. Do not hide the ears. Smile openly. Look straight to the camera. So a sample of that is this. This is my very own picture. This is my headshot and my full length photo. I got this taken in Cebu, I think it's called Great Image. They have that also in Manila. Okay. And for the dress code, we will just lightly touch on the dress code that you will wear in the picture. We will also talk about the dress code that you are going to wear during the interview on the next lesson. So this is just a little bit of a summary. So the outfit that you take on your picture sh should match the one you'll be wearing when going to the interview. Much more interesting if you do that. It's much more preferred by the airlines. So for the women, um, you can wear black, blue, gray, brown, black, or green suits. Shirt, probably uh, white or light color. Beige, light blue, light pink, not transparent. Knee length skirt. Light colored stockings, dark colored high heel shoes, preferably. Uh, this should be one and a half inch. Okay, this is too high. One and a half inch is the standard. Engagement ring, wedding ring, pearl earrings, or small transparent rock, and a small watch. That's all the, it's all the accessories that you need. You don't have to over accessorize. Don't wear a bracelet. Don't wear a necklace. Things like that. Actually, this is. Doesn't look good, right? So it's preferably that you wear black shoes instead of nude ones. Nude ones, if you have nude um, coat as well, it would be nice. But since you're wearing black, also wear black. Your hair is short, comb it neatly. If your hair is shoulder length or longer, you need to have a bun. Depends on the airline that you're applying for. For Air Asia, they want the hair down, but for other airlines, they want the hair up. So if your hair doesn't touch the collar of your shirt, the back of the collar of your shirt, it's okay to put it down. But if it touches the collar of your shirt, you have to put it up. Wear natural makeup appropriate to your color complexion. And for the males or gentlemen, um, you can wear blue, black, or dark gray suit. Only thin stripes are accepted. Classic color, long sleeve shirt, preferably white. Um, simple tie, matching the, so the color of the suit. Socks, shoes, and belt 
necessarily matching the color of the suit. This is not the time and place to have a neon colored tie to stand out, okay? It's so much better to stand out in a classic way. Other than, you know, trying to look funny, it's not gonna fly. <laughs> okay, so attentively polish shoes as well. Short, neat hair, and the only accepted accessories are wedding ring, slash engagement ring, and watch. So when you're applying for the job as a cabin crew, photographs will be taken, uh, will bear much importance in the recruiting process. So it's important because they will show it to the HR department and the company, uh, of the company after the assessment day. And they will take into consideration your picture when it comes to the HR, and that's the time that they will decide if, for the response of your application. So make sure that your photos are on point with these pointers. And now let's move on to the next lesson. If you'd like to have more tips about your interview, check out my book and my online courses. I will link them down below. Hello and welcome to week four or our fourth module. Our first lesson is all about first impressions where your goal is to wow them in the first 10 seconds. So how do you do just that? That is what we are going to study today. During the impact interview, this is where you will have a short interview with the interviewers or the recruiters, and this is where they assess your first impressions or the first impressions about you. My mantra during impact interview are eye contact, smile, and posture. All you have to do is remember these three words during your interview to be able to pass that impact interview. Maintain eye contact, remain smiling, and maintain a good posture. This will be just like a two-minute interview, so doing this within the two or five minutes that you will be with them says a lot about for the eye contact, it shows that you are somebody who has confidence, you are somebody who is trustworthy, and if you are ashamed of doing a straight up eye contact with the recruiter, you can use an imaginary triangle around their eyes so that you will not look too confrontational. So you have to look at a triangle around the eyes to make it more comfortable for you something like this so your vision can look from here to here to here and that's a good technique to maintain eye contact smile smiling be a smile ninja you can smile to the recruiters or anyone that you meet during introductions mid sentences or during your pauses when you end your sentences or your statements, that's the time that you make a smile and eye contact at the same time. When you do this, you become more friendly, you become more positive, and you will seem like a good candidate for the job. Imagine that it's the happiest day of your life. This is the best advice that I have heard when I was applying for Qatar Airways. Because most recruiters will judge you based on your aura, on your feel, the way you come off to them. So if you are happy on that day, they will also feel it. And when they feel your good aura, your smile is authentic, sincere, and you really feel happy to them, they will have a hard time forgetting about you. The next thing that you should always uh, remember during the impact interview is your posture. You need to drop your shoulders, chest out, straight back. Uh, maintaining a good posture says a lot of positive things about you. But if you forget about it, this is how it will come off to them. If you're fidgeting or you're like moving, tapping your feet, moving your hands, you know, this will show that you can't handle stress because all of us may feel nervous, but you are showing your nervousness through fidgeting. Slouching, it will show that you are tired. So avoid showing them this during the first meeting or the impact interview. It's a bad 
first impression. And tensed shoulders show that you are nervous. That's why on the posture, the first thing to do is to drop your shoulders. All right. So what will your impact say about you? If you remember this three mantra, you will be very successful in your impact interview and you will have a very good first impressions for the recruiters. So always remember the mantra. Eye contact, smile, and posture. How to handle rejection. Having the skill to handle rejection can be the most important skill that you need to have if you want to pursue this career. Because whether we like it or not, we will surely face some rejection when we are applying for this job because the number shows that there are too many applicants and too few slots available for everyone who wants to be a flight attendant so the supply is limited and the demand is very high the key to handling rejection is not to take it too personally as well as have a solid desire to pursue this dream that is why on the first module, I ask you to write down the reasons why you want to be a flight attendant because this is the key or this is going to be your source of inspiration during those times that you may get rejected. The pain is of rejection is very hard and it is not to take lightly. That is why I have a few tips on how you could cope if this happens to you. The first tip is to accept what happened and let the pain flow. If you try to stop the pain from going through your body and your mind, then you are going to create a lot of blocks that may trigger whenever you try to accept or try to pursue this career once again. Those times that you get mental blocks or when you self-sabotage, these are because you haven't really processed the emotions that you felt for the few times that you have applied before. You will always feel fearful that you may do the wrong thing or you might have forgotten something and you might always uh, blank out and start thinking about what will happen if you encounter that pain again. But if you thoroughly process the pain and have it leave your body, then you will not be afraid anymore. What you can do is you could write down your feelings on a piece of paper so that it's not a part of you anymore. You are purging it out of your body and putting on a piece of paper and write down your realizations and what are your learnings from the experience. You can also do a meditation and when you feel pain, just cry it out or talk to your pain. Say to it that, I see you and I am here for you. It's okay. It's okay to feel hurt of this experience. It's okay to feel the pain. You will be better than you were before. And it will not come back to haunt you anymore. The next tip is to have faith. Have faith in the timing of your life. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, um, God doesn't want us to get something because it's not yet the right time. And believe it, I know you have already heard this from your friends so many times. Maybe it's not yet the time, maybe it's not the right time for you. And that brings some truth to it. When I get, a, when I get hired as a flight attendant, I was 27 years old and I was rejected so many times from another airline. So. The timing when I got hired was just the perfect timing because all my friends are already in the company. I am at the point of my life where I am mature enough to handle the future challenges that I was about to face as a new flight attendant overseas. So sometimes life happens for a reason and you just have to trust that the timing of your life will come. Tip number three, don't take rejections too personally. It's not a good idea. Sometimes a rejection has nothing to do with you at all. Sometimes a rejection is not about you. 
there's a possibility that the company may have exceeded their quota or the aircraft that they ordered got cancelled. Tip number four, focus on what you can control. Let go of the things that you cannot control. Focus on areas like your resume, your grooming, your research. If ever you still got rejected after that, know that their decision is beyond your control. It doesn't mean that you are not valuable, what you have to offer is not good, and you will never be good enough. All that it means is that you're not a fit for them. If they fail to see that, it's their loss and not yours. Focus instead your attention and energy to your performance and improving your skills on the interview so that the next time that you apply, you will be a better candidate. Tip number five, think of rejection as a numbers game. I've always told my brother back when I was in a call center job that if he wants to apply for a call center job, he needs to apply 10 times to get hired to one. So this is a technique always that always has been used by salespeople. When they are going on a sales call, they need to make 10 sales calls to make one sale. So it's the same thing with the job applications. You need to learn and apply what you learn from a rejection. Use that to your next application. So there you have it, folks. This is my ways to handling rejection. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And on the next module, we will talk about the spiritual preparation or how to have the X factor on your application. See you then. Bye.